Hi, my name's Dave, and in this video we'll be looking at financial instruments. More specifically, we'll be looking at accounting for an investment in a debt instrument using amortized cost. In this case, the debt instrument in question is a five-year corporate bond issued on the 1st of July X0. It has a face value of $1 million and pays a fixed annual interest payment of 7% on the 30th of June each year. For reference, a bond is like an IOU between the borrower, the issuer of the bond, and the investor, the lender. Whoever invests in this instrument will receive $70,000, which is the 7% multiplied by the face of $1 million, at the end of each year for five years, as well as a $1 million face for the bond at the end of five years. Now the investors don't get this set of cash flows for free, they pay for it up front. In this case, Sara PLC purchased the bond on the issue date and paid $1,031,000 for it, as well as $5,000 in transaction costs. We're told the effective rate is 6.142% and that Sara elects to classify the bond as held to maturity. This is important as it affects the way in which the bond is accounted for. Sara then sells the bond on the 30th of June 2000X2 for $1,012,000 and this happens after receiving the coupon payment. This idea of selling the bond wasn't part of Sara's original intent. In this example, we'll focus on Sara's accounting for the bond. The first step is what to do for initial recognition. According to IAS 39 paragraph 43, when a financial asset or financial liability is recognized initially, an entity shall measure it, measure it at its fair value plus, in the case of a financial asset or financial liability not at fair value through profit or loss, transaction costs that are directly attributable to the acquisition or issue of the financial asset or financial liability. That's a bit of a mouthful. The key word in this is not. Held to maturity investments are not the same category as financial assets or financial liabilities at fair value through profit or loss. As such, we do include the transaction cost into the initial measurement of the investment. Breaking it down, there are two elements which we need. The first is fair value of $1.031 million. And the second is the $5,000 of transaction costs for acquiring the bond. This means the total initially recognized is $1,036,000. As an entry, we see this as debit investments held to maturity of $1,036,000 and credit cash $1,036,000. To determine how this bond gets accounted for after initial recognition, we turn to IAS 39 paragraph 46. After initial recognition, an entity shall measure financial assets, including derivatives that are assets, at their fair values without any deduction for transaction costs that may incur on the sale or, dis or other disposal, except for the following financial assets. And with this, we're looking at B, held to maturity investments as defined in paragraph 9, which shall be measured at amortized cost using the effective interest method which is relevant here because Sarah has elected to account for this investment as a hold to maturity investment. So what is this amortized cost using the effective interest method that's discussed here? To answer that, let's look back at paragraph 9 where it's defined. The amortized cost of a financial asset or financial liability is the amount at which the financial asset or financial liability is measured initially at recognition minus principal repayments plus or minus the cumulative amortization using the effective interest method of any difference between that initial amount and the maturity amount, and minus any reduction for impairment or uncollectability. And if you thought the first one was a mouthful, that very much took the cake. Breaking this down, we start with the amount at initial recognition. And that seems like a pretty reasonable place to start. From that, we deduct any principal repayments. We then make an adjustment for the cumulative amortization using the effective interest method of any difference between the initial amount and the maturity amount. 
You would have noticed that while Sarah paid a total of $1,036,000, including transaction costs, for the bond, the face of the bond was only $1 million. The difference between the amount paid and the face isn't just due to transaction costs. It's also affected by how the coupon rate stacks up against the market rate. In this case, a premium is paid, so we can assume the 7% coupon the bond is paying is greater than the market rates at the time of issue. What the effective interest method is doing is allocating the difference over the five year life of the bond. So by the end of year five, the cumulative amortization will sum to $36,000. Last, we adjust for impairments or uncollectability, which in this case is not an issue. We'll now turn to a spreadsheet to work out the rest. Okay, so to deal with subsequent measurement and one way to go about doing this is to set up um, an amortization schedule. And I've done that here by setting up opening interest payment change and close columns. In the opening column, um, this would be the opening amount for, in this case, the financial asset that we're dealing with. And we were told that is $1,036,000. We're also told the rate in this case, and we don't use the coupon rate, we use the effective interest rate, is 6.142%. To calculate the interest column for, or the interest in that particular period, it is the opening balance multiplied by whatever that effective interest rate is. So that will give us $63,631. The payment is the coupon payment, which was the 7% on the face. So that gives us $70,000. The change, I use it as the absolute difference between these two figures. So the change shows how much the opening is being adjusted by. And because we know we're working down to $1 million, we take the opening of $1,036,000 minus the change gives us an error I'm not too sure why but we're okay there and that gives us one million and twenty nine thousand six hundred thirty one that becomes the next period's opening and we can actually just drag this down so you can make payment load payments needs to be the same and we can drag it down for the five periods that we need. Now one thing I just want you to note here um, and I'm going to leave it in this particular case because it's not material is this should in reality be equal to the face of the instrument the one million dollars and you can see that we're slightly off and the reason that we're slightly off is because this rate has been rounded up um, well has been rounded to three decimal places. In reality, it would continue along for quite a few more decimal places and that would give you an exact figure. So that's what's causing it the slight discrepancy, but it's not a problem in these cases here. Um, in any event, we're only worried about the first two years for this particular question. So I'll highlight them. In terms of the entries that we have, one thing that's also useful to note is if we were to add up the change column, we would end up with, again, it's out slightly, but very close to $36,000, which is the adjustment, the cumulative amortization being adjusted from that opening balance of 1,036. So the first date that we've got is the 30th of the six X1. And for what we need to do here, there are three accounts that are going to be affected. The first is cash because they're receiving $70,000 in cash um, in that particular year. So we, on that particular date, so we debit $70,000 cash. The investment, the whole to maturity investment is being reduced slightly from that 1,036,000 and we go to the first 
row and the change is 6369, which is what has been credited to investment. And we also credit interest income. And that is the difference between them. So you can see that these two will add up to the 70,000. So even though they have been paid 70,000, they have not recognized $70,000 worth of income. This then continues until the financial asset is derecognized. And we can actually copy these down and we then just use a second line. So payment is 70, investment HTM is 6,760 and interest income is the second line there of 63,240. When we finally derecognize this particular um, or sell off this particular financial asset, they do so for 1 million and 12,000. So we can put that in as a debit. As a credit to the investment, we take whatever the closing balance is at that particular point, which is the end of the second period. So 1,022,871 is credited. The difference, the difference is a debit of 10,871, and that is a loss on sale for the investment. And that is the set of entries for the subsequent recognition and then derecognition of the financial asset. And that covers accounting for an investment in a debt instrument using the amortized cost method.